This video is going to illustrate the difference between standard deviation and standard error. <coughs> I'm going to use this database from the EPA's eGrid. This is uh, 2016 data on generating facilities, and I have just the data here for wind turbines in the US. And I'm looking at the generator capacity factor, which is roughly what percent of the time they're generating electricity. So here's my data set. And I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to see, well, how many items do I have in this data set? What's the mean? And what's the standard deviation? Okay. So equals count. And then equals average. And equals the standard deviation. And this is actually standard deviation of the population. So I'm going to put P right there. This is the whole population of data. OK. And the other thing I can do is make a nice histogram of this data so we can look at it. Let's go back up here. <coughs> See, insert histogram. Okay. So put capacity factor, wind 2016. Oops. 2016. The other thing I want to calculate here is the median. Because one way to tell if this is normally distributed, is, is the mean and the median the same? Are they the same? So we see here that the median is somewhat larger than the mean, and that's not a surprise because if we actually look at this data, we see that it is skewed to the left. So these low values here pull the mean over to the left, while the median, the median is more to the right. So now what if we took a random sample 10 times from this data and then took the average of that sample? So that's what I'm going to do now. So I made this row of numbers in column C. <clears throat> so I can randomly select from that numbers and then I use the, the capacity factor associated with that. So I'm going to use this form. <clears throat> so here I'm going to write random sample. Random sample. I'm going to do this 10 times. So one, two, this down, this in here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to use V lookup. V lookup. And then I'm going to choose a random number, a land between, if I can type it correctly. I want to choose a random number between 1 and 1166, because that's how many data points I have here. And then I'm going to use this area, that array, and I'm going to choose the number from the second column. And I can see all right there, that looks like a random sample. And I can check to see if this is correctly working by going to formulas and say calculate now. Oh good. Every time I click calculate now, I get a different number. So I'm randomly choosing one of these capacity factors based on randomly choosing a number between 1 and 1166. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to put little dollar signs in front of this so I don't move. I'm using a function F4 to get those dollar signs. Oops. Get those dollar signs. And now I'm just going to pull this down. So now I get 10 random samples. So again, as I calculate now, it's going to keep changing. Now let's get the average of this. Mean of the sample. OK, so that's the mean of this sample of 10 items. And again, every time I calculate Hit calculate now, I'll get a slightly different mean. But 
it's close to the mean for the population over here. So now what I want to do is calculate a mean for 10 random samples 500 times. So I'm going to do 500 trials and I'm going to get the sample mean 500 times each time using a different random collection. So I'm going to make a row of numbers from 1 to 100, 1 to 500 here. So I'll start with 1, and go to fill, series, column, 1 to 500, OK. And this spot here, I'm just going to say it equals my little mean that I have calculated there. And now I'm going to make a data table. So I'm going to highlight this whole area, go into data, what if analysis, data table. There's no row input. And for column, I just choose any empty cell where the calculations can happen. And it's going to populate that column. OK? So let's put some colors in here to make this a little bit better. OK, here we have random samples. Oops. OK, and this is what I use. Let me make this in yellow up in this corner here. So now, move this out of the way. So this was my mean of the samples one time. So now let's get this mean of my collection of means. So this is my mean of means, mean of means. This is a little wider here. We're going to equal average of this collection of 500 means, samples of 10. Okay, and you see that that's very close to the population mean. And again, if I hit calculate now, that would change slightly each time. My mean of means, and then I also want to collect um, the standard deviation of this collection of sample means. So that is technically the standard error. So the distribution of sample means is the standard error. Okay. So still going to say standard deviation. Oops. There's my standard deviation of these sample means. And note, this is what I have now. Write that in red. And this is what I had before. Now the difference should be the square root of 10, approximately. So if I multiply this times the square root of 10, I should get that. Or like alternatively, if I divide that by square root of 10. So if I did standard error from the population, so this divided by the square root of 10. Yep, there they are. They're pretty close in number. The other thing I could do is I can take, make a nice histogram of this, put it below the other histogram, insert histogram, so you can take a little look at that. And uh, indeed it does look more normally distributed than the earlier histogram. And you can also see it's narrower. This goes to about 0.4, this goes to 0.6, and this starts close to zero, and this starts about 0.2. So change this to distribution of sample means. And if we did larger samples, oops, so we did samples of 10, but we could also have done samples of 20 or 30. So the larger the samples we made and collected as means, the narrower this distribution would be and the smaller our standard error would be. So for example, if we did the same test with samples of 30, so then we would have had a standard error using 30 for all of our, for the sample sizes. Our standard error would have been approximately this divided by square root of 30. So it would have been a smaller and narrower distribution. Okay, I hope that's useful. So long.